I would like to clarify with you um, <coughs> something that I think there's some confusion about still. Um, which bit of Netanyahu's tweet do you say is false? Well, he is making very serious accusations against me. I attended a conference in Tunis in 2014, along with conservative and liberal party parliamentarians, as well as other Labour colleagues, and people from the United States and many other parts of the world, to discuss a peace process, to discuss the unity of the Palestinian peoples in how they relate to Israel, and our policy of a two-state future. That's what the conference was about. It was very important. It was very useful. It was also, at the end of it, a commemoration of those that died when the Israeli jets bombed the Palestine Liberation Offices and community in Tunis, a bombardment that was condemned by Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan at the time, as well as the UN Security Council, and a wreath was laid on behalf of those at the uh, conference to all those that had lost their lives, including families and children. I'm still not entirely clear, um, because there's a photo of you with a wreath, um, and that wreath appears to have been laid by the graves of the Black September attackers. So did you lay that wreath on those graves, or by those graves? The Black September attackers, as you refer to them, uh, some of those that were accused of that were actually killed in Paris, and some of those were killed in Beirut by Israeli agents. There were people there who were not involved in anything to do with that whatsoever. And indeed it was Yasser Arafat's number two who was actually killed during that raid. And I, along with other colleagues who were delegates to the conference, laid a wreath in memory of all those that have died in the hope that we have a peace process and peace in the future so those raids are never repeated. So to be clear, because I really I'm, don't I'm want totally, to... Yeah. I'm totally clear. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. totally clear that the way forward is of peace, the way forward is of dialogue, the way forward is of recognition. It is not bombing. It is not shooting civilians in Gaza. So you did lay a wreath. Um, in memory of all those that died in the 1985 Israeli attack, which, as I've repeated now again was condemned by the UN Security Council and the UK government and the US government. But was that wreath not laid by the graves of those who were killed in the Mossad strike in Paris in 92? It was laid on the graves of all those that had died. And you did take Look, part in I laying I totally wreath. condemned what happened in Munich in 1972. Appalling, totally wrong by any stretch of the imagination. You, you said a moment ago that your view is that the way to get to peace is to engage with people and to talk mm -hmm. to people. Um, and you've said that you've shared platforms with people who you disagree with entirely mm -hmm. as a means to doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder on how many occasions you've shared a platform or been at that kind of conference with members of the Israeli government and whether you've ever laid a wreath at the graves of Israelis killed in Palestinian attacks. I've met many people from Israeli Parliament, the Knesset, over the years. I've indeed visited the Knesset, and I've met visiting Israeli delegations when they've been to Britain. And of course, anybody killed in this awful conflict has to be mourned, and the killing has to be condemned. The way forward has to be dialogue, which can bring about a long-term peace process. And so I would say respectfully to President and Prime Minister Netanyahu, the killing of all those civilians in Gaza has been condemned all around the world. Keeping the people of Gaza corralled in by military force isn't going to bring about peace any more than expanding settlements is going to bring about peace. Surely the way forward is the recognition of Palestine and with it alongside, of course, the recognition of Israel. You said yesterday, I think, that <coughs> You were there at that ceremony, but that you didn't think you took part in the wreath laying. But I think you're now saying that you were part of the wreath laying. I was there when the wreaths were laid. That's pretty obvious. There were many others there who were witness to that. I witnessed many other people laying many wreaths. Did you lay the wreath? 
I laid one wreath along with many other people in memory, as I've said, of all those who died in the awful attack in 1985, which, as I keep repeating, you seem not to understand, was condemned by the whole world. I, I absolutely, I see what you're saying, Thank but you. there were also graves there for those who were killed in 92, where there is not universal condemnation of that, if you see what I mean. Yes, there are other people in that cemetery, as there are indeed in many other cemeteries around the world. But a grief was laid in memory of those that died. I mean, Luciana Berger, when we were at a point of saying that you were there, but you didn't think that you'd actually taken part, said that being there should get an apology. Now we're, I think we're a step further. So do you not... I mean, clearly Luciana Listen, Berger, as a Jewish MP, wants an apology for your having been there. No, I'm not apologising for being there at all. I went to a conference to try and promote peace in the Middle East. I remembered those that had died in an attack on Tunis by the Israeli Air Force, which was condemned by the whole world. And I'm sure Luciana would also condemn that attack. It was unprovoked, it was wrong, and by killing Palestinian people there, did that advance the cause of peace? Of course it didn't. Do you consider attacks on Palestinians by Israel to be acts of terror? They can be acts of terror, depending on the circumstances. I've seen houses in Gaza where families had lived that had been bombed by targeted bombing by Israeli jets where women and children have died who clearly could not by any stretch of the imagination be called a threat to anybody. And it has to stop. Does that mean that you consider the Israeli government to be a terrorist organization almost? No. What I'm saying is their policies are wrong in relation to the siege of Gaza and in relation to its settlement policy and the occupation of the West Bank. Surely, if there's to be peace, then there has to be recognition of the rights of Palestinian people to link alongside the State of Israel. Um, I think you also wanted to give some kind of response to events that are going on. I appreciate that you've been here in Westminster, but um, I, I think that you've been briefed probably. So uh, what's your response to events that are unfolding at Parliament today? I heard about it as soon as it happened first thing this morning. I got calls from colleagues straight away, and uh, my office has obviously been in touch with all the appropriate authorities on this. It's appalling. It's quite shocking. And I think we say big thank you to the... Uh, emergency response by police, fire and ambulance to get there so quickly to assist people. An arrest has been made, an investigation will take place. They have labelled it a terrorist incident. And so I think we'll have to see what events unfold from there. But clearly it is very disturbing. Tell me um, a bit about why you were here, what you're doing. Well, I grew up near here, which is Harper Adams University. And uh, I'm very interested in what they do. I'm very interested in the future of rural life and agriculture in Britain. And this is a place of frontier technology, of plant research, of animal behavior research, and of using very high tech for farming, such as automatic milking machines, such as use of drones to monitor crops, and of crop development. And um, it's world renowned. Students literally from all over the globe come here, as well as more local students. And uh, we need to grow more food. We need to grow more food efficiently by using less pesticides and less fertilizer. And we also need to protect the biodiversity of our society, indeed improve the biodiversity of our community. And this college does all that studying. And I think it's a place we can learn a great deal from. And this morning I've got some very good ideas from it. And indeed, looking at a, um, the hands-free hectare, there's a hectare of barley being grown where nobody has been on the field at all. It's all done by machine with remote control and a lightweight machine so it doesn't impact too heavily on the soil. Impressive. I've learnt a lot and it will help us form our policies on investment in rural communities but also investment in the infrastructure of rural communities such as improved bus services and transport links as well as the development of um, agricultural industry beyond crop production.